Hello and welcome to this lecture and in this lecture we will continue with uh, application which is the chat application so in the previous lecture we have learned about the sign in and sign up process so we have designed the sign in and sign up process i've actually pasted the code over here because we have already gone through the code a number of times so once that thing is added or uh, that is the sign in and sign up methods are uh, added to your application what you need to do next is that you need to go to this main activity right here and you do need to set up the mauth as well as auth state listener so the reason for adding these two things over here is because you want to make sure that even before user actually accesses these two activity this activity which is the main activity which contains the entire chat messages he should be actually logged in into the system so in order to make sure that he's logged in into the system we basically go ahead and add in a new firebase auth state listener over here and we basically check if the current user is actually equal to null and if the current user is found equal to null then we basically redirect him to the register activity so once this thing is done that is once this thing is added and the auth state listener is added in the on start as well you are basically good to go so what you could do now is that you could go ahead go to the authentication and make sure that the sign in method for email and password is enabled and after that go to database and change the database rules to be not equal to null because right now we have enabled the authentication and whenever you want to insert values into the database now the authentication rules should always be equal to or let's say not equal to null so once you have made these changes you could see if the sign up and the sign in process actually works and if it doesn't you always could refer to this code so i'm actually going to go ahead and provide this code at the end of this section so once that thing is done let's go ahead and now add the username to message so the first thing which you need to do here is that you obviously need to go to the send button clicked method which should be right here okay so we have our method over here and the first thing which you need to do here is that you need to get uh, the current user value. So right now, the only thing which this thing is actually doing is that it's checking if the message value is not empty. And if it is so, it's actually posting the message into the database. So now what we will do here is that we will go ahead and first get the value of current user. So even before doing that, you need to declare the current user over here. So that's going to be private Firebase user. And let's say that's going to be M current user. So we are actually going to get the current user value over here in the button click method. So we are going to type in M current user equals, that's going to be M auth dot get current user. So once we have the current user value, we could now go ahead and get a reference to the user's database. So what we will do here is that we will type in m database users and I guess we don't have the database reference yet. So let's quickly go ahead and create that. So that's going to be private database reference. That's going to be m database users. And now let's go ahead and get a reference over here. So that's going to be m database users equals that's going to be firebase database dot get instance dot get reference dot child and we are looking for child which is users and here what we are going to do is that we are going to get a child we are going to get the m current user and we are going to pass in its uid over here so what this actually does is, is that it refers to the child users and it refers to the sub child which has the current user id so once we have this thing set up now we could basically go ahead and extract his name from the database so after that what we need to do here is that we need to go ahead and right after this push what we will do here is that we will add a value event listener to the m database users so that's going to be m database users dot add value event listener that's going to be new value event listener and as you could see now we have the on data change method so here you just need to add in a, semi a semicolon and after that you could cut this line and paste it right over here. Now make sure that this line is only posting the message value in the content child. So what you need to do here is that you also need to post the username along with it. So we will type a new post dot child and in here let's name this thing as username. So the child is now named as username and we want to set its value 
to the name of the user now the question arises how exactly are you going to get the name of the user so we are actually going to get it from the data snapshot so that's going to be data snapshot dot child and we are referring to a child with a value which is name so if you open up your firebase console if you go to users this should be actually named as name so if your n is in small letters make sure that you use small letter over here for n so after that what we do is that we use name dot get value and once we get the value we basically go ahead and add an on complete listener to this entire thing which is going to be new on complete listener so after that once this thing is done we should be able to successfully add the name along with the message content so after that you don't want to basically do anything over here so you are basically good to go now one more thing which you need to do here is that once the message has been added you want to make sure that you scroll to the new position so here what we are going to do is that we are going to get a reference to the recycler view which is m message list so we will type in m message list dot scroll to position and we basically want to scroll to the last position that is the last message so we type m message list dot get adapter dot get item count so this item count actually gets the number of messages or the maximum number of messages right now present in the list and it basically passes this number so that it actually becomes the position so for example if your application actually have has 20 messages right now so what this actually does is that it passes the number 20 to this so that we could easily scroll to the position number 20 so once this thing is done uh, we are almost good to go so the only thing which you want to change here is that you want to go into the view holder and type in view holder dot set and that's going to be username and I guess it's not accepting the username right now because you also need to pass in the username over here in the message class as well so we almost forgot to do that so let's give a comma type in username pass in the username value here as well so this becomes string username so this dot username becomes equal to username as well and then finally the getters and setters for the username so this is the getter for the username and this one is the setter so once this thing is done go back over here and then after this I guess you also need to add in the set username method as well so that's going to be public void set username which is going to be string username and here we basically get a reference to the text view and let's name this thing as username content this is going to be equal to text view and then m view dot find view by id r dot id dot that's going to be username text so once this thing is done we set the username content so username content dot set text is going to be equal to username okay so once this thing is done let's finally go ahead and set the view holder so view holder dot set username is going to be model dot get username okay so once this thing is done everything should work absolutely fine so let me just save the code and let's go ahead and run this application so as to see how it works so as you could see the application is up and running and let me just go ahead and type in hello over here so as soon as I hit the send button as you could see I get hello from Rob and the reason and the reason why we got the username as Rob is because if you actually go to users right now we only have Rob as a username so in order to check if the other usernames actually work what you could do is that you could go ahead and log out the user by using the logout functionality we have used in the previous applications so once you log out the user log in, log in with a new username and your application should work just fine now this application has this problem wherein we don't actually get the current time so as your homework what you could do is that you could go ahead and go ahead and add in the actual time instead of this dummy time right here so that's going to be your homework so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you guys next time thank you